What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Queen Season Night, and I'm back with another video. So you already know, we got us a new episode of P-Valley. So I am here to give you the recap that you all love so much. So episode eight was called The Death Drop. And baby, bodies were dropping, okay? So if you want to know what I have to say about this episode, then make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the video. Also, if this is your first time over here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on, and have a seat and welcome to Queen Season Show, honey. <laughs> but I'm gonna see y'all, you know, in a video. Meet me there, don't beat me there. No, beat me there, don't meet me there. opens up with our girl Mercedes trying to get her groove back. We know that she hasn't been back at the club since she had her big fall at the grand re-re opening. So she's trying to get right for the re-re-re-re re opening of the pink. <laughs> Y'all Uncle Clifford cracks me up when he say that. But we can see that Mercedes is struggling even though um Diamond pulled the seven pounds off of her shoulder she is still not feeling this. So her routine that she doing is very, very sloppy, but she is feeling down and out. Of course, none other than Uncle Clifford comes through to let her know, like, girl, get it together, okay? When we have the grand re 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 opening, people are not coming to see you win. They're coming to see you fall again. Cause last time you fell right on your face and I felt like he was telling her, like, girl, People is out here praying on your downfall, so don't give them what they expect. Like, work hard and do what needs to be done. But y'all know Mercedes always has a clap back for Uncle Cliff, and she let him know. Like, yeah, the same problem that you having, that you telling me, how the, you think all your problems with the pink is in your head, no, it's in your hands. And I think that she was letting him know that all the stuff you got going on, Remember, they had all the financial problems, all that stuff. That is in your hands. You are some of the problem, you know? So, y'all know they always had that back and forth, but they are tight like this. So, I don't never look too much into what Uncle Cliff and Mercedes got going on. Because it ain't that deep. We're all ganging up against all of them, okay? Next thing, of course, Uncle Cliff goes back home and he is giving Lord Murder a line up. And y'all, Lord Murder has made himself at home over there with Uncle Cliff and Grandmother Ernestine, okay? So, he, we can see that he's on the phone calling the hospital. You know, Cliff is worried, sick about Ernestine. But y'all, every time Cliff and Murder is in a scene, it is just always a lover's quarrel. Like, they can never just, just you know, let things be what it is. So, those two start arguing, you know... They wasn't really arguing. They was just having a little back and forth to where, you know, they got into it to being like, you know, I don't know where you've been. You've always been so secretive about everything and all of this stuff. So they kind of, you know, get back and forth. Cliff is kind of pushing to see, you know, what Lord Murder has been up to because I suspect that he suspects that there is another person in the picture, which we already know that Big Teak is no longer in the picture, but Cliff doesn't know that. So... I think that Cliff is trying to find out, like, what are you sneaking and geeking? What are you doing? And, of course, you know, Lord Murder is like, okay, I don't know what you've been doing the whole time that I wasn't talking to you, okay? So, y'all, they had a little back and forth and all that, but we know that that is not going to last long. But, at the end, after they got finished arguing, the hospital finally picked up the phone. He's calling because he's trying to check on grandmother. And the hospital is like, look... You just called 45 minutes ago. Stop calling here. Nothing has changed. If, if if we don't call, everything is all good. If we call, then it's something wrong. Relax. Y'all, that really, <laughs> that really made me crack up because y'all know that I used to work on a unit. And yeah, people will be beating their phone down when they be calling like every five and ten minutes. Like, <laughs> the same thing as five minutes ago. Like, 
Tell me what I'm doing to get on the phone to talk to you. Then I can't deliver my patient care to the patient, okay? Stop calling. Don't call me. I'll call you. So I thought that that was very funny because it is true. And if y'all are the type of people to do that when your family members is in the hospital, stop. So it goes back to Mercedes. We know that she's out, you know, getting her exercise on because she's preparing, you know, for her big debut again. And she runs into none other than Maine. So we know that Maine was on the box. Um, we know that he had the fat little boy put the, <laughs> what did the ankle monitor on? He got caught up. He got locked back up again. But we see that Maine has returned and the chemistry between those two is, you know, just ever present. So I actually think that they make a cute couple, but Maine seems to be like all into this gang stuff, which I think, you know, Mercedes is trying to elevate. I also, I mean, they make a cute couple, but I don't like her for him because he's just like, you know, gang affiliated. And like, Coach is just a mess like you know he got the coins and all that but he's trash too so mercedes is like you know looking for actual true love and we hope that she finds that but we see that her little boo from around the way man came back so they are you know finagling back with each other and he asked her on a date it really wasn't a date because it's the block party was outside of her house but uh, y'all know how it be so the next thing that we get to we have Keyshawn in the diner meeting Autumn Knight, a.k.a. Haley Colton, a.k.a. What's her other alias? Autumn, Haley, and what's the... Golly, I don't forgot the girl. Her, Autumn got all these identities, okay? So basically, we see that Autumn is trying to get Keyshawn a new identity. Some reason, I think that this is going to come back to bite them in the butt. So we know that Keyshawn is just already like, you know, hurry up and do what you gotta do with the kids, birth certificates, before Derek noticed that they gone. And I'm like, dang, he got Keyshawn birth certificate on lock. He got the kids stuff on lock. Like he's doing everything in his power, making sure that she does not leave him under any circumstances. I was like, damn, he got all that stuff locked up? Like, Derek, ugh, I'm so sick of him. But anyway, you know, Autumn is like, look, I can make it do what it do. And she was like, did you look up what I told you to look up? So she let her know, like, yeah, I looked it up. She said, okay, well, if this person allegedly died in a flood, how is she sitting right here drinking coffee? So I was like, oh my goodness. Crafty, crafty Autumn, always up to something. But I really think that it is going to bite her in the butt. Hopefully she does get the kids a new identity and passport and all of this stuff but i hope she don't get Keyshawn and the kids nobody did identities because that's just uh, uh, autumn is really a hot mess but i feel like that's all gonna be just very 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 messy so we're gonna hope that autumn does right by Keyshawn and that Keyshawn does her part to escape but i don't know about this y'all this really don't seem like a good idea to me um yeah, so we're going to keep Keyshawn lifting in prayer and, and Autumn too because she deserves so after it. after Keyshawn leaves the diner, boom, 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 breaking news comes on the TV in the diner. Who is it? It is a smear campaign <laughs> for Great Value Obama, a.k.a. Andre, okay? So we know that he's running for mayor, and as y'all probably know, at your regular elections or when people are running, that is when they start playing dirty. They start getting people deepest, darkest secrets, and then you start seeing them being aired on TV. So that's exactly what they did to Andre. They like, you know what? The mayoral um, candidate is sitting here saying his dad is dead, and he ain't got no family, you know, and all of this, and he's the heir to Tidal uh, Ruffins. Uh, throne as the mayor of Chuck and Lisa, they're like, no. He's a liar, his dad is a murderer, and he's on death row in, in the Mississippi jail. Ball drop. So y'all know that um, Andre could not believe that. But you know who else was very, 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 very hot about it? Corbin, okay? This season, Corbin is coming into his, uh, Corbin is acting like his um his Caucasian brothers and his Caucasian counterparts. He is really um doing a bit too much. I'm not feeling Corbin because 
I feel I, I gotta get I'm gonna get in the comment a little bit. I'm gonna get in the comment a little bit more. But he is pissed because he already know who created this campaign. His brother did, Wayne Kyle, who is also running for mayor. So you already know that Wayne is gonna try to do everything to sabotage um Corbin and Andre's plan. One, because Wayne Kyle does not like Corbin. Corbin is the bastard child of their father. And yeah, like he's gonna do everything in his power to ruin whatever Corbin has going on. So I can't wait to see how this plays out. The way Corbin has been getting mad, he might be getting ready to do something to somebody. So Corbin might be in jail, okay? He because he's 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 losing it. After Keyshawn comes from meeting with um Autumn in the diner, she makes it back home and she makes it back home literally probably just in time. So she's sitting there washing the dishes and in comes Derek, okay? And Derek is bearing gifts. So Derek comes in with a pair of Louboutin shoes. And I was just sitting there watching it like, how are you going to buy somebody a gift with their money? Like, technically, she bought it herself because you don't work nowhere. So, how are you just going to take her money to buy her a gift? Was right, like, I was, <laughs> I was like, you use her money to buy her something for herself. But anyway, y'all, so he got her the Louboutins like, oh, I got you something. So, he sits her down in the chair and y'all, it was giving... Cinderella. So remember what her stepmother told her, like, you know, don't be no man's Barbie doll. You know, don't be his Cinderella. Okay. So he comes, put the shoe, put the little glass, it ain't no glass slipper, but you know, put the little tent on her. And she like, look, it don't fit. Okay. She's very over it. She's my son. She like, look, it don't fit. So he like, I got you a seven and a half. And she's like, you know, your feet spread after I done had these babies. I don't wear a seven and a half anymore, you know? And Derek, maybe you would have known that if you would have been paying attention to your woman instead of wailing on her, okay? So, y'all, we, you know, they saying that you can go from wearing a cute little nine and a half, you had some kids, you be in a big 11. So, y'all, he gets up and like, I can't do anything right and get the beat in himself. Anytime somebody get the hit beating their own damn self up just run <laughs> like, like just run because you because you on some next level with that that's very scary so she was looking at him like are you okay and that's literally how i was looking at my tv i was like no like are you okay because I, I probably would have told him i would have been like yeah so whenever you're done like That was that was a bit much for me. So I was like, yeah, he need to be on some type of uh, medication or he need to be in the institutionalized because Derek is bad shit crazy. So whenever, if, hopefully he don't, but we already know, he is going to get a whiff of what Keyshawn is doing. And I feel like he is going to go for colored girls on her and the kids. That's what it's giving because each episode, episode after episode, we're waiting to be you know, smoking on that dark pack and it's just not happening. Like he keeps coming episode after episode after episode with more drama and more nonsense. We are sick of Derek. Like, so Autumn came up with this plan while they was in a diner that the way that Keyshawn was going to escape was by saying that she wanted to headline the pink again she wanted to work back at the pink and they were gonna take the kids and whisk away and he would never know anything i don't think that this plan is going to go over but that was the plan so after he got finished beating himself up and doing all this and you know doing the most he was like you know what i'll do anything i'll buy you a new car i'll do this for you i'll do that for you how you gonna buy her that you ain't got no job you ain't got no money so how you gonna buy that but anyway she ended up fooling him bit like, you know what I want, just can't be bored. And he was like, you want to work back at the pink? And she was like, yeah. So at least he agreed that much to let her go back to work at the pink, okay? So she's one step closer to being able to escape dark, but we won't have to hold on for this because I really don't feel like it is going to 
go the well. next thing we get is of the cow brothers so we got wayne cow versus corbin cow and y'all they are going at it corbin is pissed because wayne has launched a smear campaign not only against andre but also against patrice woodbine yo <laughs> y'all know patrice makes me sick but y'all after they put her smear campaign and they went to um interview her and they said well patrice was this you doing this, this, and this? She said, you damn right. She said, I did it. She said, I might have did a little drugs, turned the trick or two. She said, and beat a bitch ass. She, <laughs> she said, I did it. I'm bored to get again now. I'm a pastor. So what? I said, okay, go ahead, Patrice. <laughs> I said, go ahead, Patrice. I said, Patrice makes me sick. But y'all, what they say? Uh, stand firm in your word and walk in your talk. So Patrice is standing 10 toes down on what she did. Corman is really not too much worried about Patrice. He's trying to get her out of the way. But he is more pissed at his brother because he like, look, why are you doing this and you know that I am backing, I'm footing the bill for Andre. And, and Wayne is like, yeah. He's like, I know you are. And that's why I'm doing it. He's like, you know, you interfering with what I'm trying to do, okay? And I also think that the Kyle brothers are feeling some type of way that he's backing the black candidate. So just for the people, I know some people say that they haven't watched it. Okay, so the thing with the Kyle brothers is, is Wayne and I forgot the other one name. They're pure white, Caucasian, mom and dad, right? Corbin Kyle is the son of, I guess was his mother. I think his mother was the maid or something like that because it wasn't back in slavery because it this is like taking place in like the 2020s so his mom had to be the maid but anyway the dad cheated on their mother with the maid or the help or maybe that mother was passed away we don't really get like that much of history but anyway that's their bastard brother but i believe that the father cheated with him and had him also do y'all i find it real ironic that the black brother the one that's half black he got the cotton feel. Did y'all notice that? So while they out living their best lives and all of this stuff, they still have Corbin Kyle essentially picking cotton, even though, you know, it's generating him revenue and yeah, you can say it's farming in the South. I still found it very significant that, you know, he is the one who is still tilling the cotton farm. He is the outcast brother. They still pick on him. Last season, they put a gun to him and told him, like, yo, we will kill you. Like, you're nothing to us. So, I was like, damn. I was like, you know, they really showing the difference. And I feel like that's why Corman is so angry because he's not accepted by his brothers. He's not really accepted by the black community because he is half white and he's related to the Cow brothers. And his fam, you know, his brothers and dad is kind of infamous in Chuck Elisa. So, Corman kind of is getting it from every angle and i think that's why this season he is like trying to boss up on people but little did he know like he's really not busting up on nobody he's just really showing all his insecurities so corbin pipe down the next thing that we go to is our girl georgie well georgie is not really our girl but it goes to georgie she's in there getting her hair did getting her hair curled with coca-cola cans okay definitely down in the valley okay so autumn walks in and georgie is like <laughs> looking like okay it was the hairdresser for me miss miss della mind your business so the hairdresser who named was della gonna say um i think you're in the wrong place shanae show enough she ain't say shanae show enough but she's like shanae show enough salon is down the road like Girl, what? So Georgie tells Zella, like, you and your uh shampoo girls, please excuse yourselves because me and her is talking business. So Georgie lets her know, like, oh, the last time I seen you, you had your little red wig on, you but you know, this little brown wig piece that she got on is cute. But she makes a comment about being yourself and lying about who you are. I think that Georgie is definitely going to do some investigating on autumn to find out who she really is and they want to know 
How, where does young girl get all this money from? If I was Georgie, that's what I would be wanting to know. How does she have the means? Where does she come from? All of this stuff, right? So Autumn is letting her know, like, look, I want 10 mil for the property. And Georgie is crafty, okay? She is crafty just like Autumn. But I think Autumn might have a little foot up on Georgie. But, hey, you know Georgie is old and wise. So basically, she just lets her know, like, listen, little girl. I got old money. I got long money, okay? I can wait you out because I know your coin is going to run out. However you came about the coin, if we don't get the property now, I can just get it later. She told her, I'm offering you five mil. That's it. Take it or leave it. And you already know. Autumn looked at her and said, I'm leaving it. She said, I will see you at the polls, okay? So... Hopefully, this all works out for all of them. Hopefully, Georgie doesn't find out who she is. But knowing Georgie and her coins is long, she probably will be able to find out who Autumn is. And maybe they will lose the pink. So, who knows? We'll see. But I'm pretty sure that if Georgie is investigating Autumn, Autumn is digging up her dirt on her. Like, don't think for one second Autumn ain't digging up her so, own dirt. So, the next thing that we get to is at the funeral home with Woody and Lord Murder. So, it is time to have the film for Big Teak. They're inside the funeral home. He's getting his clothes together so that he can get them dressed, you know, for the viewing and all this stuff. And Woody and Lord Murder actually get to have a moment together and actually talk about all of the stuff that's been going on because literally so much has been going on. So Lord Murder just asks Woody, like, do you ever get tired of being around death? And Woody lets him know, not when you intimately know death, no, you don't get tired of it. And Lord Murder makes a comment, say, yeah, it, or if you are death. So Woody lets him know, like, look, I did what I had to do to protect you okay rome had it coming he tried to do what he did to mississippi he was sneaky he was always sneak dissing and yeah like he deserved what he got he was a snake so lord murder is just still trying to wrap his mind around because he's like yo did you really have to go that far and woody lets him know like okay yes i did have to go that far because he had a video of you. So Lil Murder's like, well, how you know he had him? He's like, yo, he showed Keyshawn. She seen it with her own eyes. He had a video of you, so I had to take him out. So Lil Murder was like, you know what? What happened in the video? I was 15 years old, and I had to do what I had to do to make sure I stayed fed, my family stayed fed, so it is what it is. And he's like, yo, you killed this dude, but... What if he already sent the video about? Like, then we're still back at square one. And I think at that point, Woody realized, like, damn, I didn't think that part through. He kind of acted impulsively. But anyway, I still feel like, you know, what he did to Rome was much needed. But also, that was a question, um, a question that we had brought up. Did he already send it to someone? Does someone else have a copy of the tape? So, y'all, am I the only one who thought... I thought when he had the tape, it was because he had set up a hidden camera in the hotel room and he caught him a big T. So apparently, I guess this is another incident and this has been happening since he was little. So I'm wondering, is it a situation where Lord Murder um, was taken advantage of as a child and that's what made him the way he is, but he had to adopt this, you know, hardcore street persona because of the environment that he was in. So that made me think about that and you know what could have possibly happened to him in his youth to make him be the way that he is today so i don't know y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all got from and that as part. all this is going on i think that little murder is kind of coming to grips with the fact that he is outgrowing chuck elisa he's becoming big because he asked woody like you know why me? Like, why are you willing to go the extra mile and do all of this for me? And Woody Straight let him know, like, one of us gotta make it, and it's gonna be you. So we know that he's blowing up. He has a song with Tina Snow, so he like, yo, you my dog, I'ma make sure you get where you have to go, 
even if I have to sacrifice myself. And I feel like that is just like the ultimate sacrifice in a friendship that you can have. And that shows how much love Wardy has for Lord Murder. So it pans back to the club. Everybody is trying to get ready for the reopening. Y'all, Diamond and Big Bone is just like booed up in the club. Like, it was like almost weird. I was like, <gasps> okay. <laughs> but Oh, Cliff was like, okay. He was like, I don't think I never seen him smile. So it must be something, you know, really, really going on. That's nice between the two. So, y'all, we know Mercedes is back trying to get this routine together, y'all. And it is a mess. Like, it is giving, girl, sit down. It's giving, girl, grab the tickets at the door because the routine that she got, she need to cut it. Y'all, Roulette and Whisper was over there cracking up. They was like, man, this is like looking at my grandmother try to hook up her Wi-Fi. And that is exactly what it was given. And I really feel bad for Mercedes because, you know, I feel like if she would have had her gym and, you know, wouldn't have got swindled by Patrice, she would have been a lot happier. But while all this is going on, it's none other than Autumn. She always comes in to ruin any plans that Uncle Clifford think he got going on. And she like, look, we gonna have a whole nother headline for the show. And Mercedes is like, who? And nobody walks in other than Keyshawn. So when she walks in, everything stops. We see Diamond looks like he saw a ghost. And everybody else is like, What's she doing here? Because y'all know that they all had this big falling out from what happened at murder night. Murder night was a hot mess. So all of these people, we never expected to see them all back together again at the pink. The crazy thing is Whisper and Roulette is like, oh girl, we got your legend. They are, you know, really admiring her really not knowing what she got going on at home. And they like, oh, girl, we find so much strength in you. We admire you. We look up to you. And even though Keyshawn doesn't feel that way about herself, she puts on her fake persona and like, oh, girl, and this and that. Yo, Rula and Whisper, <laughs> child, they some bad page. Booger sugar doing. I'm like, what are they doing? I'm like, they ain't trekking. They doing the booger sugar. They going, what, is, what do y'all got going on? I know it's somewhere in the rule book that say don't do booger sugar. Rule 5076. We don't do booger sugar. <laughs> but y'all, anyway, roulette was still trying to convince um Whisper to hook up with the dude Terrence who said that he wanted to pay her. To lick it now, lick it good. This just like you should right now. So she is trying to arrange this. But I mean, and what's what is like, look, I don't really know about all that. I don't do all that. And Roulette is telling her, like, look, get this easy money, shorty. So y'all know that Whisper is real into, you know, the, the universe and all this. So she takes out her little, I don't know what it is, but it's a dreidel. I it's not a dreidel. Whatever it is, her spirit guide thing. And she lets uh, Roulette know, like, look, I'm I'm watching you. She was like, look, don't be all grabbing all on us because you're messing up the energy in the room. She was like, but I'm going to be watching you. So while they having that little conversation, Mercedes kind of has a little, little like, conversation kind of with Keyshawn where they're both reflecting on being back at the pink like being somewhere they didn't expect to be somewhere they didn't want to be like mercedes had this big plan she already danced her last dance well was supposed to and supposed to start this gym so all of her plans fell and she's right back where she started and the same thing for Keyshawn. Keyshawn then went out on the road she done got all these followers all this stuff and guess what right back where you started at so i like that they just showed that moment where they kind of were just looking at themselves in the mirror like damn like how did how did i get back here while all this is going on in the dressing room y'all can hear 
freaking Uncle Clifford and Autumn are screaming to the top of their lungs. They are having a full out argument. This argument leads to Uncle Clifford packing all his stuff. He like, you know what, girl? F you. F the club. I'm out. I don't have time to deal with this. So he goes, he gets in his car, and at his lowest moment, he hears the voice of his mother. And his mother straight out was like, who ass I gotta be? Because we know when he was talking to Lord Murder, telling a little bit about his story, he was like, yeah. He was like, anytime somebody said something or did something to me, my mother was there to smack them. And she did not hesitate. My mother did not play. So she said that and she lets him know, like, look, you can't keep fighting the water. Sometimes if you can't get through the water, you got to bring the water to you. He said, and guess what? We will sit here and cry, okay? We get even. So I felt like that gave Uncle Clifford his strength. And I was left because I said, baby, they all got rules. He got to remember his rules. He got to remember grandmother Ernestine rules. And he got to remember his mama rules. But y'all, these are rules to get you through life. And I love so, it. So the next thing that we get to is a Big Teeks funeral. So the whole hood and HBH gang, they all come out to show him love. So I guess something that they do for their gangs, they all take their chains off. And they laid it on the deceased so that they could bury him with all of the chains. So they laid Teak out wonderful. But also, I felt like when Lord Murder went up there and gave him the Lord Murder cha chain, it was like, it was almost, to me, kind of like endearing. Because he had on other chains. He could have put another chain on there, but him... Giving the little murder chain, you know, it was kind of like, you know how I be like, if your boyfriend got a chain or whatever, he be like, yeah, boo, like you wear his chain. So I felt like him giving him that chain was like very endearing, and also I felt like being that he gave the little murder chain away, that little murder was getting ready to turn into big murder, like he's really about to boss up. I was like, yeah, he done put that little murder chain to rest. It's get ready to be big murders because we already know like he got this song with Tina Snow. He kind of blowing up. It ain't ready to be Lord Murder no more. It's big murder. So y'all, they laid Big T out nicely. And after they put him in the hearse, we all know Wardy is there because he owns a funeral home. But he's also there for his friend. And right when we get to something so beautiful, one of the big homies is like, yo, come look at this. None other than Pico is on there straight acting like he tough. Talk about, yeah, yeah, I put that big homie down. I put him down, da 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 So the big homies of the HBH gang was like, they told Lord Murder, like, you need to handle this. So they gave him the green light to go ahead and take care of business. But, y'all, we need to get into Pico. Nowhere on earth have I seen somebody. How you just switch gangs? So, if y'all don't remember, Pico was down with Lil Murder and them crew. But when he was down with Lil Murder and them, he always used to be sneak dissing and saying little stuff. You know, basically, you know, implying, you know, Lil Murder's sexual orientation. But that also made me think, like, did Lil Murder and Pico have something going on at one time or another, and he was jealous about him and Lil T. I mean, him and Big T. That's what it was giving. Pico is a punk. And then I was like, how he just get to switch gangs? Like, how he was just in the HVH gang, and then how he get to be in main gang like that? And I was like, never have I ever heard of somebody, you know, like, being a blood, and then they're like, I don't want to be a blood no more. Let me go be a crip. How he just get to switch gangs like that? I was like, yeah, no. We're not feeling Pico. Pico, that was very distasteful for you to sit there. Like, why would you lie and say that you did that to that boy? And the next thing, it flashes back to the club and Mercedes gets a call. Because we hear, I'm a gummy banger, I'm a gummy bear. So we know it's Tarka calling. So Mercedes runs back to Tarka and Shell is there. And guess what? Shell knows what went down in Jackson and she is pissed. 
She's letting Mercedes know, like, look, you are not her mother. You're her biological mother, but you are not her mother. And you had no business taking her to get that procedure done without me knowing. So, of course, you already know Shell was going to take a dig at Mercedes. And she let her know, like, I'm not like you. My family is not like you. We don't just throw our responsibilities away. I was like, oh, my goodness. Here you go. They get to going back and forth. And ultimately, Tarka, I don't want to say, but she turned on Mercedes. So, that's the one thing that I don't like is, it's kind of like, Mercedes is trying to make an effort with Tarka, but Tarka is just very sneaky. And she used her being pregnant as an opportunity to kind of get what she want and also kind of manipulate uh, Mercedes into doing what she kind of wanted. You know, let me know if y'all kind of understand what I'm saying. What Tarka did to me was kind of manipulative because why would you run to Mercedes if you really didn't have the intentions of doing that or if you was going to act like you... I don't know, y'all. It's so weird. But I just feel like, yeah, Mercedes, I know that's your daughter and all that, but I don't, I don't like how she turned through on you. That, that was that was tr that was crazy to me. Next thing that we get is with Corbin and Uncle Clifford. And we know whenever these two get together, they are going to be fussing about something. So Cliff and Corbin are longtime friends, and as we know, they were probably both the misfits in town because Uncle Clifford is the way he is, and then Corbin was the misfit because he was the half-white, you know, the half-bred kid. So you already know the people probably wasn't feeling him. So they formed a friendship. So Uncle Clifford basically pulled up on Corbin and is like, look, you are doing everything to try to sell my property. And he like, look, man, you go way back. And Corbin is just like, look, I'm trying to make this money. I'm trying to make this happen. But Clifford lets him know, like, look, me and you are one and the same. And while you sitting out here trying to prove yourself to everybody, know who you are as a person. Because I know who I am as a person. And, y'all, we, like I was saying earlier, like, Corbin is just trying to do something so he is not looked at the way that he is. He know that he's not really accepted by the whites in town and he's not really accepted by the blacks in town because he's too white and the white people think he's too black. So, he's just caught somewhere in the middle where he really doesn't know what to do. But, he's going to do something and he doesn't mind stepping on people on his way to the top and uncle cliff is that him know well guess what if you if you can't get to the water bring it to you so why uncle cliff is saying this y'all corbin was out there messing with his irrigation system when the phone because it went down but literally if the uncle cliff said that psh, let there be water the water starts sprouting and uncle cliff said hmm now ain't that something and he leaves so after all of the contemplating roulette finally sets up the move for terrence to get some of whisper so whisper is letting roulette know she like look girl i don't feel too good about it she like my third eye is tingling i don't think that this is a good idea and roulette is like look girl i got you get this easy money and we out of here so Terrence comes to the hotel room and he's like, yeah, you ready? Roulette is like, look, I'm staying. So whatever you got to do, handle your business. And he's like, all right, like, dang. So Roulette goes in the bathroom. She paying her little candy crush and all of that. While Whisper is out there, you know, making that money, honey. So, <laughs> so when they all said and done... Terrence gets up and he throw the money on the ground, which was very disrespectful. Like, you know what they say? They say at least leave it on the nightstand. Like, but he straight throw it on the ground like she's trash. Like, yeah, huh? Pick the money up. So when she pick it up, she was like, "Look, you shorted me." At that time, Roulette busts out the door and like, "Yeah, what's going on?" So he like, "Ain't nothing going on." So Terrence, you know, he was like, "Nothing going on." He thought he was gonna slide out. Did. Whisper was like, you know, he shorted me. So, Roulette is not trying to get 
you know, <laughs> she not trying to get gritty with him. She's like, look, just give her what you said you was. Give her what we agreed on and go ahead about your business. Terrence is like, I'm not giving y'all nothing. So, <laughs> Whisper lets him know, like, look. Yo top was trash, okay? That's why I wasn't making no noise. I wasn't doing none of that because it was trash. Go work on that. Turn y'all no bruise male ego. He get the choking uh, mess out of Whisper. I mean, choking her down to her knee. Straight butt Simpson. Oh, straight butt Simpson. But baby. <laughs> Roulette had... The blicky on Zach. Roulette was like, clack, clack. Yo, let me. <laughs> Don't ain't play with her like that. So he was like, man, shorty, you better go ahead. She was like, I'm not playing with you at all. She was like, you know what? Let's play my favorite game. Her favorite game is her name. So she gets to playing a game of Russian roulette. He thinks she's bluffing. She straight hit him once. Bam, hit herself. She like, I'm not playing. Bam, hit him again. He looking like, oh, this girl is crazy. So, I know he was scared at that point. He's like, yo, she is crazy. Roulette is like, yeah, I'm not playing. So, she straight told Whisper, like, take his clothes off, y'all. Whisper is in there crying. She like, please stop. Because guess what? Y'all know about the game of Russian Roulette. So, y'all know what it could be. It could have been a murder scene. So, she was like, man, strip him butt naked, okay? Also, remember that Terrence was the one that was making the comments to Roulette about her having DSLs? So, baby, she put that gun in his mouth. And she made him polish her still. She was like, okay, you want to make comments about my DSLs? Now you got DSLs. Uh, uh, bam, bam, bam. After that, y'all, they grabbed the money. She grabbed his keys. She ran out. Her and Whisper ran out, of course. They stole his car and went right. And I was like, okay, my girl Roulette is a ride or die, and she ain't with the shits, okay? So the next thing we see, of course, because Autumn has been calling Andre all day after she's seen the Smith campaign, he has not been answering. So in true Autumn style, she just pops up at his place, okay? She pop up with a little moonshine. So they get to having a conversation, you know, about their parents, and she's let him know, like, look, why you keep denying your dad? And he lets her know, like, look, I was ashamed of him. I don't want to be anything like him. So I tried to remove myself from him as far away as possible. And it's easier to tell people that he's dead than to tell people that he's on death row. So Autumn starts to share a little bit about herself, saying that I guess she was adopted or that she doesn't know who either one of her parents are. Y'all, I don't know. I feel like Autumn is definitely playing Andre, but also... She lies so much. Like, I don't even know if what this girl is saying is the truth. And I'm not trying to figure out if she is telling the truth either. Like, I just can't with her, right? I can't with Autumn. So, that's the end of those two. So, we'll see how they play in the next episode. But always keep in mind for sure, Autumn is definitely playing Andre. So, she could just be saying that just to make him feel like they got something in common. Because we already know how she like to get down. The next thing we get to is Punk Ass Pico in the store. He and they, you know, buying him some snacks, walking through the hood. Like, you know, you know, like he run the place. And I'm just looking at him like, you a flip-flop phony, like, What? So anyway, he walking through this open field and it's dark outside. So I was like, that right there, let me know you not a G for real. Because anybody know, why would you, like, that ain't even the route you supposed to take. Why it's not the route he's supposed to take? Lord Murder in the cut. That's a scary sight. So Lord Murder in her back, he pull up on him like, <laughs> yeah, like, what's up? So he had a mask on, but he pulled his mask down. Y'all, I'm hoping it was no cameras back there, but I, I hope it's no cameras back there. 
so that him get charged with nothing or whatever. But he let him know, like, what's good? Your Pico gets the back paddling, like, no, 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 yo, you know why I ain't do nothing to Big T. I was just saying that. I was just starting for the gram. I was just. If you're a G, just stand on it. Like, what? So, Lord Murder was like, look, I don't got nothing to do with that. You shouldn't have never said it up your mouth and don't disrespect him like that. He was like, oh, but don't worry. Don't worry about it. I got you. Pico was like, yo, I got kids. I got kids. Lord Murder, like, all right. He was like, I'll make sure to tell him what type of person you was. Dump the Glock, show me your work or something. <laughs> Golly. Y'all, he lit him up like, like the 4th of July, y'all. Oh my, what was that? Was that a Draco? I don't know if that was a Draco or Uzi, but whatever it is, I was like, Golly, y'all, Wardy gonna have a time with him. But y'all, y'all, it was well deserved. He took Pico out because Pico knew better. He was running his mouth and he was a flip flop. Like, what? But then I was like, if Pico in the new hood, it wasn't nobody out there. Because people was just running in the background. So I'm like, wait, it wasn't no homies out there at all? Like, not even one? Like, not even one person? Like, I know everybody was at the block party when main and all of them, but, like, not one person was to the store with you? I don't know, y'all. But anyway, y'all, so they having a block party out in front of the house. So Mercedes, of course... Pulls up to go home and they acting like they don't want to let her down the street. Like, first of all, move. If it was me, I would have been on the horn. Like, bam, 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 they get to running. You know, they all grabbing the big Dracos. They going to go find to go avenge Pico, which I don't even know why they avenging Pico because Pico was in one gang then he came to the other one. So, whatever. May was about to go, but then, you know, he ended up staying with Mercedes because she like, look, you already on the box. Like, if it's a hundred of them going, what you need to go to for? But I get it. May is the leader of the gang. I'm assuming he's a leader because he act like the leader. But yeah, so they just stay in and they talk. Y'all, I found this to be so freaking unfortunate because as Mercedes was talking to him and opening up to him, you know, he was just really just kind of like interested in her body. So she was, you know, asking him like, you know, does this feeling of what I done ever go away and he was just like no you just really learn to deal with it like the guilt gonna eat you each and every day so y'all was kind of hoping that you know they could have had a cute little relationship but main i think that he i don't even know do he really like her i don't really i now i i don't know now i think he just wanted to sleep with her and he just thinks she fine but she had to let him know, like, look, I'm not looking for that. And he was like, all right. And he just straight was out. So then that made me think, like, was he ever really, truly interested in her? Or did he just want to hit? I feel like he just want to hit and that's it. And she looking for something a bit more. But I thought that that was really unfortunate. I was like, dang, man. Like, I wanted you to have, like, a little bit more substance to you, but... Apparently not. So the next thing we get is Uncle Clifford visiting the cemetery because he goes to talk to his mom. So he was like, look, you've been coming here a little bit more often. And I know it's because I haven't been coming out to the cemetery to see you and to talk to you. Y'all, he know that mama like to get down. So he poured mama some crown royale. So he poured her some crown. He poured some crown for the dead homies. <laughs> And, y'all, he began talking to his mom, which I felt like, y'all, it was just so, 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 so sad to finally see Uncle Clifford becoming vulnerable and also, like, us getting a little bit more of his family history. And he just let his mom know that, like, look, I know you keep coming because he's uh, the mom has also been 
coming to grandmother Ernestine, drawing her to the light. And he's letting his mom know, like, look, I already had a hard time dealing with losing you. But if Grandma Ernestine goes, I really don't know how I'm going to be able to handle things. So we can see that he is really hurting about that. He's really missing his mom. And he also feels like he doesn't have anybody. He's also dealing with being in a secret relationship with a down low guy, like, it's a lot for him. I really honestly feel bad for Uncle Clifford. So, I don't know, y'all. Let's just give him a hug. Y'all, then we get Patrice in the pulpit, y'all. Oh, she is up here putting on a show for the gram. And she, oh, and praise the Lord. Oh, I mean, look. she doing the Patrice Woodbine thing, you know. Y'all, so... I was laughing because I was like, Narcissus was getting her donations, baby, while she was preaching. So she was shouting, <laughs> she was shouting everybody out. I think Shaquille O'Neal sent her about $3,000. <laughs> Shaq sent her about $3,000, y'all. And then she gets a big $10,000 donation. So y'all know when she got the 10 racks, Patrice got the cutting up even more y'all know one thing she like is a money 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 so y'all she really got the you know doing her thing but at the end of the service her little helper was letting her know like look the 10 rex came with a note and it said cash me outside so y'all know patrice went outside to see who it was that gave her that money when she gets outside who is there waiting for her None other than Corbin. So y'all already know that they have hatched this plan together to try to get Patrice to drop out of the mayoral race. And she is like, no, because y'all trying to get this casino. I'm not trying to drop out the race. She keeps saying no, but Corbin slid her a little package full of some cash. And he said, look, drop out the race. You making it hard for me. You making it hard for me, okay? Drop out the race and I got more cash where that came from. Y'all know Patrice likes to get them palms greased and y'all know she will beg, borrow, steal. I ain't gonna say kill, but she will slap a bitch. So <laughs> y'all know she is willing to do whatever. Do y'all think Patrice is gonna drop out the race? I don't think she gonna drop out the race. I think she gonna keep the money. And she going to use the buddy to keep wreaking havoc on all of them. I don't think she going to drop out the race. Y'all, but... this episode was so good. And the person who was my favorite this entire episode was OG Roulette. Y'all, she pulls up to the garage. Y'all already know what type of garage it is when you got hit the... <laughs> Y'all know she took Terrence's car to the damn chop shop, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> y'all not only did she strip him she done stripped him robbed him took his car now she getting that thing chopped down baby and getting the money for it okay making that car what disappear so she meets duffy there and i figured i should already knew that duffy worked at a chop shop all the stuff that he be into so she let him know like look go and get rid of this for me and y'all know that he have a crush on her. So they did that little flirting and all that. And she was like, ain't nobody gonna be missing this car. And she was like, nah. So Duffy reached in and got the registration and was like, Terrence Jones is not gonna be missing his car. She looked at him. She said, no. Nah. And she walked out the door. When she walked out, y'all, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> My girl pulled the revolver out. She looked at it. And literally, if she would have took that last shot, she would have blew turns to smith the rings. So, y'all, she just smiled and walked away. Roulette was definitely... Roulette was definitely the breakout star. And the second breakout star of this episode goes to none other. I'm going to call him Big Murder because he stood on his name. He stood for his man. He stood up for hvh okay next we get the lord murder going to the stew 
which we hope that he's not in the stoop incriminating himself because we noticed how all these rappers now was getting hit with the Rico because they go in the studio telling on their business. So we hope that's not what Lord Murder going to do. But we just hoping that he going to take those raw emotions of all the things that he got going on on his mind and make another hit because literally everybody is counting on him, okay? But while he in the stew, it pans down and we see that he literally still has the blood on his hands. And y'all think that stopped Lord Murder? He said, man, turn the beat up. And it panned in and he was straight like, Ugh. it was giving get at me, dog. It was giving Get At Me Dog and the episode cut. Uh, the artistry, the realness, the rawness, the street, just everything that P Valley has going on this season is giving me life. Y'all, some of y'all say that y'all haven't watched P Valley and y'all just listen to my reviews, but no, y'all have to go watch it and go watch it from season one y'all stars is doing their thing katori hall all of the writers wardrobe everything y'all and listen alphonse what's his name alphonse nicholson he is amazing at his role the way that he captures straight up the raw emotion like i be feeling little murder i be like dang Y'all, I love, 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 love P Valley. If you're loving the reviews, make sure that you like this video. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Definitely in the next episode, I do know that Terrence is going to come back for Roulette. But guess what? I think our girl Roulette, she time enough for his ass. So she already is anticipating this, okay? We hope that Lord Murder has another hit on his hands. Hopefully, Grandma Ernestine come back from the hospital. Y'all, it wasn't looking too good, but now I have a glimmer of hope because Uncle Cliff went to talk to his mom. I don't know. I have a glimmer of hope for Grandma. And we're going to keep waiting to see what happens with Keyshawn. We're going to see what happens with the um, mayoral race. And also with Andre. I think that Andre is going to get curious and go visit his dad on death row. But, I don't know, y'all. That's just my short little predictions for the next episode. But, I will see you guys later. Bye!